I'm on a marathon this week to get the finishing touches done on the doghouse. We'd really like to get the doghouse primed before uh, the winter cold sets in. Before we get to boat work, we're gonna tell, in honor of Halloween, we're gonna tell a scary story about Duracell from back in the day. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. So as you well know, Duracell has an incredibly storied past. And occasionally we get emails and stories from folks who actually experienced some of that storied past. A while back we got an email from Dan who, hel who helped build Duracell. And he told us this crazy story uh, about something that happened up in Rhode Island back in 1991. And then we got another email from John who actually took pictures of this event. So I'm just gonna read the email we got from Dan to let him tell you the story. Hi Matt, I knew Duracell from the day Roger drew up the plans for her until she was purchased at the Newport Boat Show. During her layup, your boat was a labor of love and a lot of sweat equity. Very few people were paid because there was no money to pay them. A fair amount of my own sweat is in that boat. Anyway, money was always tight, so Mike decided to sell Duracell in 1991. We, of course, did our best to promote her being in the, new, in the boat show, and we were elated to learn she would be billed as the boat of the year at the Newport Boat Show. But as fate had it, about a month before the boat show, Newport got hit by Hurricane Bob, with the eye of the storm tracking directly up Narragansett Bay. Of course, Mike wanted to protect his investment, so he rode the storm out with his stepson. Sometime during the hurricane, Mike's mooring began to drag, so he was forced to try to get into the bay and sail the storm out. Unfortunately, his stepson unfurled the working jib instead of the storm jib. Being totally overpowered, Mike could never get to windward and safety, so he had no choice but to sail back and forth within the Jamestown mooring field. Mike would later tell me how it was dodging boats sailing 16 knots in 120 knots of wind, praying he could keep the boat off the beach. But as fate had it, with every jibe, the boat came a little bit closer to the beach and eventually she grounded and then bounced onto a sandy beach in Jamestown. As for damage to your boat, I can happily tell you that there was no delamination, though up forward on the starboard side of the hull, it needed to be refaired. If you take a look inside along the hull to deck joint, you will see three holes, if memory serves me correctly, but they were only along the hull to deck, to deck joint and was easily repaired. Amazing story. And I could imagine what it would have been like sailing in that much wind and the chaos ensuing and how easy it would have been to let out or ease the wrong line to pull out the wrong sail. And uh, so we're gonna take you up inside the boat, see if we can find that spot that Dan was talking about. I can't see it in here, but maybe we could see it on the outside of the boat. It's like, I think it's right here. There was a big repair done. Um, and I could tell when I was grinding away the fairing around the window that there was different colors of fairing right there, which would indicate a repair. So. Maybe that's what the area is talking about, but it's uh, comforting to know that the boat could sail through and get land and get thrown on a beach and be okay. I think that means it was well built. Finishing the doghouse means lots of little laminations here and there. I started with laminating the top of the traveler bulkhead to the roof. The traveler bulkhead is where the main sheet will attach to the boat along a track. This lamination is tying that bulkhead to the doghouse roof, making it all one big part. In finishing this doghouse project, I'm finally getting to all these little projects that I haven't, that I've been staring at for a long time. Gluing on the doghouse roof and finishing the edge and all these things. One thing to do is to finish this edge of the trailing edge of the doghouse. And I've always wanted a really nice, cool shape to this trailing edge to give the doghouse a little bit of flair. So I have, the, uh, I have the shape drawn out on this side. I'm gonna cut it out right now. I'm excited to show you.
tonight we're going to glue on the gutter rail for the water catchment system. This morning I cut out these one inch tall foam strips and they're pre-laminated so they're from old foam, foam core that I used to build interior stuff. And I cut it into one inch tall strips and we're gluing it around the perimeter of the doghouse roof and it's going to be to catch water. So tonight what we're going to do is just glue down these strips and then we'll laminate it over later and I'll explain how this water catchment is going to work. <laughs> my corner pieces and as you can see I've scored through the fiberglass and through the foam but left fiberglass hole on this side and so that mean that way it can bend really nicely make nice corners and so this is my corner piece on here <clears throat> and what I'll do is fill all those scores and glue it down at the same time and then once it's all cured, it'll just be a nice solid piece. All right, last night we glued on the rail and this morning what we've been doing is just cleaning everything up, sanding all the epoxy off and making sure that it's ready to be laminated over. So what we're gonna do is just use this light cloth and laminate over the rail. We're also going to finish the edge of these trailing edges of the doghouse here. Again, more little projects done. Isn't it crazy, Matt, that like when we're sailing Duracell one day, like every little detail of this boat will potentially like associate with some memory. Like that Sunday your parents came by and helped and yeah. we had eggplant parmesan for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you think we'll remember each project? And, like, I know, that's what us? I was just wondering is if I'll be able to remember. Well, you can always go back and see the video. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm going to be <laughs> so excited to relive the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We might need to let a few decades go by and then we can watch it. Yeah, hopefully 80s. YouTube will still exist. Yanni always makes the most delicious lunches for me and anyone helping with the boat. Judy 
and Malone, are you guys boat people? Tell our viewers about your boating past and future. Yeah, we are, we have been motor boaters, motor boaters. We have had two, two boats. The first one was a 36 foot rough water, which was a single diesel uh, cabin cruiser type boat. Monk design. Monk design, yeah. correct. Uh, it's a very popular boat in this area and very good for Puget Sound. And then um, after that boat, we had a Krogan, a 42 foot Krogan, and just sold it last year. And so now we're without a boat other than a dinghy and some kayaks. And the rough water, your parents' first boat, was the first boat we lived and cruised on together. That's right. It was a great boat. Fixed it up and had a couple great summers on it. We did. In the San Juans. Towing the honey. Yeah. <laughs> See if I can find a picture of that for a channel. Yeah. And that's the summer we kind of fell in love with cruising together. That's right. been working on all the windows in this doghouse and these three openings have taken forever to get to this stage which all I did was clean them up basically. Previously I had just done a rough cut just the basic shape in order to you know get the bulkhead laminated. So now what I've done is I created made a template and used the router to get a really close cut out of each of these. With the side windows, what I did to to finish these this end grain was I put a couple layers of glass around the edge. I'm not going to do that on these aft windows and door because these are not going to be impacted by waves as much as the side windows are. The tension is in the main sheet, which is pulling up on this bulkhead. And so what I'm going to do is reinforce these openings with some carbon fiber, unidirectional carbon fiber and backfill it with thickened epoxy. So I've dug out about an eighth of an inch of the core down into the end grain here. And I'm gonna fill it with, like I said, uh, thickened epoxy and some unidirectional carbon. Yeah, that's what we're working on this afternoon. Bye. 
We've got all the windows, the aft and the side windows all cleaned up and cut out. The last windows to do will be the windscreen windows. And this is a pretty odd shape, uh, especially these two side ones, this, these weird trapezoid shapes. So none of the edges are parallel to each other. What are going to go in these spots on the, the two side windows are going to be hatches. So square opening, uh, just your normal big deck hatch. They're going to be 24 inch deck hatches. What I'm trying to figure out is what orientation that I want them to be in because they could be parallel with this side or with the top or with this, this edge. If they're parallel with the top, they'd probably, they'd be pretty close to parallel with uh, that edge or they could be parallel with the bottom. But what I'm leaning towards like this, but I'm lining them up right now just to see what it looks like with this center, with this center opening that I'm going to cut out here in a few minutes. I think I like it this way. What do you think? That looks pretty good. about why are you so happy about this you're just so cute <laughs> whenever you make a big modification i just love how excited you get well it's i mean we're like permanently changing the boat it's like very exciting to see big changes happen like cutting giant holes in the boat i know it is exciting no but this is i just did this with a jigsaw it's a rough cut so i have this this jig and so this I'll fasten this to the boat and then use this to uh, get the cut super clean and then we'll do the same with the other we'll do the same with this as we did with the side windows where we'll we'll put fiberglass around the edge around the edge like this so yeah pretty awesome though and that blue is the size of the actual lens so there'll be a nice big bonding surface all the way around. Why can't we cut out the side windows now? Because I don't have the hatches and so I don't want to cut them out until I know exactly, until I have the hatches to uh, cut out the exact shape. So this water catchment system is very, is going to be very simple. I built a dam basically that goes all the way around the doghouse and so water will have to flow you know into one of these corners whether we're at anchor or we're sailing and there will be drains in the doghouse under like that go through this overhang and we'll just connect a hose after you know usually you let it kind of rinse off rinse itself off a little bit and you just connect a hose and there will be a fill for the water tanks just up here. It'll be a very simple system. I, we will not install the drains until after the boat is launched. And that way we know exactly where the water likes to settle um, before we put the drains in. And we'll probably put multiple ones in per side. But this dam or rail will also kind of double as a handrail or a tow rail. But I'm also thinking that I'm going to build uh, or have stainless handrails built that will go along each side. You have thought a lot about building composite handrails, but 
at some point I got to just tell myself to stop. It would be, it would be a lot of work to get those done and uh, having stainless ones built would be very nice looking. And we do plan to have a water, like a high capacity water maker on board. This would just be a, a supplement to that, you know, basically free water is uh, fuel savings. And so it'll be very supplemental, this water catchment system. So finally, the doghouse is ready to prime. I'm extremely excited to see what it's gonna look like with a different color on it. And uh, we'll be getting to that next week as well as we're gonna move on to a totally new project going into the inside of the boat. So thanks again for watching. So I'm a little behind on my Patreon thinking and after last week's episode, we got an outpouring of support. And so uh, I'm gonna split it up between this week and next week. So first, thank you very much to Dustin, who's from Oklahoma. He flew in the Navy for 20 years and hopes to get out cruising uh, with his family in the next five years. So good luck, Dustin. We hope you get out there. Uh, also, thank you to John, who is an addicted to tinkering, it sounds like, and he restored this really cool old Porsche 911, and he told me he takes it out on the racetrack. Sounds super fun. Uh, also, thank you to Richard, who's from Olympia, and he does a ton of racing with his wife, and they have a cruising boat, a Beneteau 345, that they cruise around, and they're also looking to buy themselves a bigger boat and go cruising in the next few years. Thank you to Michael, who's in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, he has, a, or had, I think, a Santana 27 cruised on the uh, Columbia River. And he told us this crazy story about going out over the Columbia River Bar on a very calm day, but the waves are still huge out there. So thank you very much, Michael. And lastly, thank you to Nick, who grew up sailing in the Bay Area with his family on a cool old IOR, 40-foot uh, IOR boat. His parents sold the boat, and then recently he went and bought it back again after it had been fixed up. And now he cruises it with his family up in BC. He sent us some pictures. It's a really, really cool boat. So thank you very much to Nick and everybody who has been supporting the project. Like I said, after last week's episode, it's uh, amazing the support you guys are giving us, and we couldn't do it without you.